Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. No funny skits for this intro. Just be sure to drop a like, subscribe for more content. Be sure to tune in next week. We have a special brand new podcast episode coming your way that might as well just call it a reboot of the Nintendo Prime podcast. It's going to be pretty awesome. I'm also using a newer green screen setup than I've been using, so uh, I don't know if the quality difference is there for you. Maybe the coloration of me is different. I have no idea, uh, but there is just more light, so... Let there be light. So in our first story today, Switch is getting a version of a game that Sony actually originally tried to ban. Now, I'm not going to say that Sony didn't have good reasons to ban, but we know that they've been um, handling how uh, they approve games to release on PlayStation 4 differently of late, and uh, they're been banning games that they feel aren't appropriate. They're trying to protect the children. Apparently Nintendo doesn't care about that or doesn't agree with it because they are allowing the full uncensored release of this game, which was banned originally by Sony uh, because it depicts, well, what they consider to be um, ch children in sexual situations. Uh, if you can't tell, this is a Japanese game. You're actually seeing it on screen right now. Uh, it's a Japanese game, and usually I, when I start thinking about Japanese anime style uh, sexualized situations, I start to immediately jump to hentai. I don't know that I would go that far with this game, but it is an ongoing franchise that has existed on Sony and PlayStation in the past, but Sony has now banned. Uh, however, Sony is getting a version of this game. It's just edited where the sexual situations are basically cut out of the game. Uh, and it's called the Umgega Labyrinth Life. Uh, that is the version coming to Switch, and then the one going to PlayStation 4 is just called Labyrinth Life. As I said, Switch version is uncensored. The games are exactly identical beyond the sexual content. Uh, the original game was banned by Sony for not passing some arbitrary board in the PAL region. They still could have allowed it to release. It just went to have like an official rating. Um, the issue seems to be the sexual depictions of underage girls, which to me, again, Japanese, is the definition of hentai. Uh, it's actually a roguelike JRPG that's been well received by people who have played it for the JRPG elements. Uh, but it's not exactly shy about what the game is. It's, it's an ongoing franchise. Uh, and part of the stick of this ongoing franchise is when you gain Omega Power, which is like what you get for defeating enemies, it actually makes the size of your chest grow. So uh, those chesticles out there on the women just get bigger and bigger the more enemies you defeat. And there's obviously some other sexualized content in the game. So my takeaway here is that I understand why Sony originally blocked the game, although they're letting the now edited, uh, revamped version come out. But I... Honestly, I'm. I, this is like what happens in Japan. There's like dating sims that are kind of like this, and some other stuff. Uh, it's kind of part of the Japanese culture, and you might be like, "Oh man, underage people are like not underage people specifically." We're talking about fake anime characters, and I think when it comes to fake anime characters, I'm a little bit more lenient on this front. But again, that's just my personal opinion. As always, I'm actually wondering what you guys think about it. Do you think it's cool that Nintendo's allowing the full uncensored release of this game? It is happening in October. Uh, it's going to be digital only if you happen to be interested in looking it up. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of torn on this because I can agree with Sony's original stance that obviously child pornography is wrong. But like these aren't actual children. So it's different. So I, I don't know. Uh, you guys let me know. I mean, uh, these are basically anime fantasies that can't happen in real life because people don't look like anime people in real life? I, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Nintendo of Europe has announced that Fire Emblem Three Houses is actually getting an even harder difficulty mode added for free later this year in an update. Uh, the game does release tomorrow. I know some people might already have it early or do midnight launches and stuff like that, review copies. But uh, right now, the only available difficulties are normal and hard. And usually the difference, at least from my experience with Fire Emblem, between normal and hard uh, is basically kind of like a classic versus non-classic mode. Where in normal, 
characters don't die when they when they die in battle whereas in hard the characters do die uh, if they die in battle and that has always traditionally been some of the difference in fire emblem difficulty however even harder mode is being added in later this year uh must be something that just wasn't ready for launch and they didn't focus on and now like whatever we're going to add it in later kind of like master mode in breath of the wild so i uh, will have to see how that turns out obviously a lot of people that are really hardcore into fire emblem are going to be interested in the hardest of the hardest difficulties just like i was with master mode in breath of the wild so we'll have to see what happens but i'm honestly i think this is nothing but a positive it's a good thing it's being added for free uh, and it really shouldn't hinder any current progress with the game because if you're going to start playing the game tomorrow and you're like oh i want to wait for the hardest difficulty the game was designed with normal and hard in mind so this is kind of like an afterthought so it might not be balanced properly for that hardest difficulty uh so i don't know i, I would just enjoy it on hard if that's what you want and i mean come on the game's gonna have like 400 plus hours and require multiple playthroughs you know from the beginning to actually enjoy the full thing so i mean you don't have to complete everything on the hardest difficulty do you i don't know maybe you're that hardcore of a fan and you're gonna put a thousand hours in but i don't know that's just me uh you guys let me know what you think about this hard harder difficulty down in the comments below Dragalia Lost has now become Nintendo's second most successful mobile game in terms of pure revenue. It has now crossed the $100 million revenue threshold, and honestly, the number one game, Fire Emblem Heroes for Nintendo, is almost at $600 million, and nothing is even close. Uh, it surpassed, obviously, Super Mario Run, and really, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is the one that surpassed that is a little surprising to some people. Uh, it is a really decent game on phones if you're looking for a decent one, obviously with microtransactions. Uh, the top three territories that are spending money on this game, even though it's free, is Japan, the United States, and believe it or not, Hong Kong. Interesting, huh? Now, it's actually least popular in Hong Kong compared to the other two territories, but the per-user stats in Hong Kong are staggering. For every person that plays Dragalia Lost, they're spending an average of $63 while playing that game. It's like 47 in Japan and only 17 in the U.S., which could tell you the U.S. audience is large for it, but we're not spending as much money as Japan and obviously Hong Kong. So I think that's an interesting stat just to kind of look at and examine the success of this game and the success of future Nintendo endeavors. Uh, Dr. Mario is, is around 800k or so at this point. Not really surprised game just came out it's going to take some time for that revenue to build up but anyways I, I honestly think this is good news for nintendo i know they're trying really hard to build up that mobile tier it's nice to see an original ip that has a much lower install base than pretty much everything else nintendo has released do this well for them but it's very clear the market that plays those mobile games doesn't seem to have as big of a problem with it Honestly, I think the bigger issue right now in the video game industry is that Grand Theft Auto V added like an actual virtual casino in the game that you could spend money on chips but can't get paid out. So it's almost like uh, it's literally dancing the line of microtransactions not being gambling because now you're literally gambling in the game. So there's that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, obviously the stipulation is that it's not literal gambling because you can't get paid out, but I mean, it's virtual gambling. Take that for what you will. Uh, there's actually a lot of casino games you can download on your phone and stuff like that that allow you to do the same thing. So I don't know that it's actually going to change anything, but it definitely is a, hey, look, you can't say that this doesn't promote gambling when uh, here's gambling literally being promoted with microtransactions. Yesterday we talked about Nintendo finally, at least internally, admitting that Joy-Con Drift is their fault. Well, that admittance was only in North America. It turns out that most people in Europe are unable to get their out-of-warranty Joy-Cons fixed for Joy-Con Drift. Lots of people in the UK, France, and Germany in particular have been reporting that they've called Nintendo and they're not willing to cover and they have no policy changes however there are other countries that have been covering like netherlands stating that there is a policy change so you have to wonder if the policy change just hasn't made its rounds in europe yet to all of the various uh, support teams what you have to remember in north america is all of the support in north america is handled by nintendo of america in the u.s in a central location so it's much easier to get the message out than it would be to all these various um different you know nintendo of Ger germany nintendo of uk all these different territories in nintendo of europe to actually have to get that message to could take a lot longer so i would just say wait a month and then try to claim your joy con drifts at your local country in europe and see what happens because i think this is this is not just going to be a north american policy i bet you it's going to spread all throughout nintendo i can't believe we're actually talking about this disney tsum tsum i actually played it at e3 but i never did an impression video on it it's actually pretty fun weird very weird the mini games are very strange but 
what I actually want to talk about is that they are releasing, in Japan anyways, an exclusive Switch bundle. And that Switch bundle has a modified, well, Switch! It has the revised version of the Switch that comes next year. You get custom Joy-Cons, you get a custom Switch, you get custom backplate, custom dock. It all looks really, really cool. And because it's Disney, I bet you it's going to become an instant collector's item like many other Disney things become. But I just think it's really cool and interesting. I'm sure Spawnway probably covered it uh, in his news wave. Shout out to Spawnwave. He does a show similar to mine, just different, covers more stuff uh, outside of Nintendo. But like, it's got, it's got purple colors, which is kind of his channel's color scheme so i don't know that's kind of cool you're seeing it on screen i think it's uh just a neat addition it's weird that this of all things is getting this i mean where's our fire emblem bundle nintendo Darksiders Genesis, which is like a Diablo take on the Darksiders series, is supposed to come out at some point this year. It was announced during E3, and it looks interesting, but what's in the news right now is there's a collector's edition and a Nephilim, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, edition as well. They're both two different types of collector's editions. They include all these various things that you're seeing on screen, but what's interesting is that the Nephilim edition costs $379, and the only difference between it and and the $109 collector's edition is the inclusion of a custom board game. That means they are charging you $270 for that board game. Now, obviously, if you've ever gone to um, like a Games by James or some sort of uh, board game shop, you'll notice that some board games are really expensive, into the $100, $150. But $270 is in the upper echelon of elite adult board games. You're talking massive D and D, you know, additions that include a ton of stuff. So I think that this is definitely overpriced. However, it is limited. There's like f only 5,000 of these things that are going to exist worldwide. So I guess that adds the collectability of it. And if you like to collect Darksiders figures, there's, there's a figure included and in all this, but that's in both versions. So I don't know. I think it's a little bit ridiculous, but maybe some of you guys out there that are more into, you know, the Catans and, and D and D and all this stuff where you're doing tabletop board game stuff, maybe to you, this is ridiculous. Reasonable to me as someone who's actually been into that stuff. I think this is even a little pricey Especially since we don't know what kind of audience exists for but very few people are gonna own it Even fewer are gonna play it because I don't know how you open a $270 item that's limited like this the, the value on it's gonna skyrocket in you know five ten years, but hey, whatever If you guys are gonna pay it go for it. We'll put links in the description I guess to pre-order if it's available Again, there's no release date for this game yet. And our final story of the day is mostly Nintendo being able to EP on all of us and let us know how rich they are. Uh, but it's also a point I like to bring up because a lot of people think, oh, Nintendo's doomed! Doomed, I say. Well, here's the deal. According to Risk Masters, a Japanese company that uh, analyzes a company's value in cash on hand. So this is this isn't a hypothetical, oh, how much stock is out there? What's your stock valuation? This is, hey, look. Today, how much money do you have sitting in a bank? And right now, Toshiba is the number one company in Japan at $9 billion in cash. Nintendo is number two. Guess how much money they have sitting in the bank? $7.9 billion USD sitting in a bank. Nintendo is rich, extremely rich. When people always bring up, oh, Nintendo's doomed. It's like the next system crashes and this and that and the online. Oh, my God, it's so horrible. Guess what? Nintendo is the second richest company basically in Japan. Sony is nowhere near the top 10. Sony has basically no cash on hand because of all the debts they owe. So, yeah, Nintendo is in a much better financial position than pretty much everyone but Toshiba in Japan. So, I think Nintendo's going to be just fine. This is why we keep saying it doesn't really matter how many times Nintendo screws up. They can keep screwing up for like 50 years and they will just then finally get to the point where their cash reserves are gone. Nintendo's cash reserves are insane. They're very smart financially. Uh, every now and then they'll take like a billion bucks and buy back some more Nintendo stock, especially when the stock is dipping. They'll buy it at that low price, so then they can use it in future partnerships when the price skyrockets because the price always skyrockets for Nintendo. They are a company whose valuation dips at the lows but always peaks back up because Nintendo is always on that comeback trailer. I mean, right now, uh, Switch is kind of their current comeback trail. Or are they already back? I mean, is, is Nintendo officially back with Switch? I mean, it does have to replace 3DS and Wii U, or DS and Wii. So, I don't know. You guys let me know if you think Nintendo is fully back. I obviously think they are. Hello tomorrow. Kill a kill. Fire Emblem of Three Houses. 
Uh, yeah, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Come on, Nintendo. Tomorrow's going to be a great day to be a Switch owner. And that's going to do it for today's Prime News. As I said at the very beginning, if you enjoy this content, drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe for more, share this video with your friends. Let's keep growing that Nintendo Prime family together. And hey, be sure to check out our Patreon as well later today at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime because there are some cool things changing with the Patreon and our podcast. Some of it might feel like cut things from the Patreon, but what actually what's happening is we're producing a better podcast show for all of you guys and i really really can't wait for you guys to see it on monday next week um by the way if you are a ten dollar and up backer on patreon you can see it on saturday i'm just i'm just throwing that out there um it's it's going to be crazy we have an amazing special guest we have a, a, a full cast this week of four people a new co-host things are going to go nuts this is the, the best the podcast has probably ever been, a whole new format. I hope you guys are looking forward to it because I've been putting like months of work into making this happen. So um, I, please, please look forward to it. Please. All right. I'll catch you guys in the next video.